in prostate cancer, PSMA is a cell surface antigen that's present in the vast majority of tumors to some degree. So about 90% of tumors will have some element of PSMA on their cell surface. May not be 100% of the cells within the tumor, but typically when we do a PSMA scan, most of the tumors will be visible. So we know it's a target for imaging. We also know that prostate cancer is radiosensitive. So we're in the era of cell surface targets getting radionuclides to that area. Lutetium 177 has an approved agent against somatostatin. A number of us have been looking at this in prostate cancer. We've been looking at lutetiums in prostate cancer for a decade and a half. But now with the advent of small molecules, we're able to do that with less myelosuppression. That being said, there are very few prospective clinical trials and no one prior to this study had ever done a dose escalation study. So we performed a phase one, two dose escalation study with the expansion phase two. Last year at ESMO 2018, we presented the dose escalation results where we essentially kept going up and up as, as high as we had planned to 22.2 gigabecquerel in a single cycle. We happened to fractionate the dose, give half and half, um, the other half on day 15 of, of cycle one. Um, as we had done that before with our monoclonal antibody, GF501. And essentially, we did not see dose limited toxicity in that phase one. We decided to stop escalation. That is, depending on the dose and schedule, that's more or less the equivalent of three to four cycles of how it may be given in Australia or, or Germany. Um, so what we're presenting this year is a combined analysis of that cohort, which has longer follow-up, plus the phase two cohort, which was additional patients at that 22.2 gigabecquerel dose. So we're presenting an analysis of 44 patients across different doses. Um, unlike many of the other uh, targeted radionuclide therapy trials, we were open in terms of enrollment. So we did not require a scan to show positivity um, because in our minds that biomarker has never been proven to be predictive. So this is 44 patients that had scans at the beginning, but we did not use that for entry criteria. And despite not knowing exactly what their PSMA expression prior to treatment is, the vast majority responded. So approximately 82% across the different dose levels had a PSA decline. Uh, a little more than half had a significant PSA decline of at least 50%. And if we look at what we consider the right dose, this 22.2 gigabecker old dose, it was 67%, about two thirds that had at least a 50% PSA decline. That was also associated with a circulating tumor cell control so about 60% had a dec uh, decline in circulating tumor cell count um, from baseline to, to 12 weeks um, with a respectable uh, progression fee and overall survival of, for a heavily pretreated patient population. Luckily, that was not at the cost of high-grade toxicity. So the majority of patients did have some uh, treatment emergent adverse events. The most common was actually a pain flare uh, around 80% had a pain flare. I mean, their baseline pain went up uh, by self-report um, over the first one or two weeks, and then that tended to get better. And xerostomy or dry mouth, we know is a on-target off-tumor um, toxicity that's potential because of PSMA expression in the salivary glands. And like the prospective Australian study, we did see that in the majority. Like most other reports, it was mostly grade one temporarily happened within one or two weeks of the treatment and then tend to get better with time and, and usually resolve to baseline uh, within a, a month or so. So that looks quite promising. And with in anticipation of this particular drug getting approved in the next year or two, we continue to work with dose and schedule. So we'll, we'll hopefully have an optimized treatment uh, when that drug is approved.